Hey guys, how's it going? So for this video, I'm gonna go over a wiring, the wiring diagrams I have for my home solar uh, bypass switch that I have here. We'll look through here really quickly. Then I'm gonna go over the wiring diagram I'm gonna be using for my grid boss, which I have right here. So I'm gonna put the grid boss in place of this transfer switch because the grid boss has its own transfer switch and it has some extra bells and whistles. We'll go over both those wiring diagrams and kind of show the pros and cons of each setup. Oh, wow, oh my gosh, it's so bright. Okay, so this is the third video so far in the playlist of videos we're gonna be having on the uh, grid boss. The other two videos were looking over the transfer switch, the components, so you can go feel free to check those videos out and we'll have some more videos on installing this and testing it. Okay, so let's look at the wiring diagram for this bypass switch first. This is the setup I currently have. Here is my inverter. I currently have, I've had different inverters right here, but currently I have a Flexboss 21. And uh, yeah, this is my uh, disconnect or my transfer switch or my bypass switch. So I can work on, if this goes bad, I can just bypass power into my, through to my main house electrical panel. Before I installed all this equipment, I just had L1, L2, and a neutral feeding into my main house electrical panel for my grid. There's actually a shutoff switch above here on the outside of my house. So basically what I did in my setup, and your, your house is maybe a little bit different than this, but I uh, disconnected my lugs that were feeding in here, and then I added what's called a Polaris connector, and it, was, and it allowed me to extend these um, these wires and these are two gauge wires for my house because I have a 100 amp uh, house electrical panel but yeah that allowed this the Polaris lugs here allowed me to connect a wire on right here and then I was able to connect run these this uh, grid wire down here to some distribution blocks now from the distribution blocks what I did is uh, I'm able to uh, distribute the grid power. So the grid power comes from these blocks. It goes over to here to these lugs here, and then also goes over to the lugs on the inverter. Now this switch has large blades, and if you move them up, it touches these terminals to uh, these terminals, or if you switch it down, it touches these terminals to uh, these terminals here. And if you look at the, these center lugs, these center lugs come down here and they feed over here up here and they tie in to my main house electrical panel. So this electrical panel can receive its power either from grid, if the switch is down, or from solar, from the inverter, if the switch is up. So it's really user friendly. If I'm out of town and say something goes wrong on the inverter or there's like flooding near my batteries, my wife can simply just switch this to the down position and it'll just bypass this whole system. She can, you know, turn off the switches, turn off the batteries, and my house will still have power from the grid. So the grid will come in here, here, and then go into my house. Now, one thing missing from this diagram is a disconnect switch. So when I've been testing these different inverters, I want power to have to be run to my house and I don't want to be working on live power here. So I, I did add a disconnect switch here. So if I switch this down to grid, run my house off grid, I can also switch power off here. And so there's no live power on this side. And so I can work on here safely. And also this distribution block here, I did add a plexiglass face for it because um, I didn't want to accidentally like brushing up against this while I'm touching this box because then I'll get shocked. So I'll just show you that real quick. And so here is uh, <laughs> the system. Sorry, there is a lot of wires in here. This is just a loop of solar wires, but um, yeah, the grid power comes in here, goes into this distribution block. And in this video, this install video, I have all the details on uh, this distribution block. I added my plexiglass and then here is my disconnect switch for my grid power. Now, I wasn't quite sure what type of dis, uh, disconnect switch to get for this. And I haven't been posting a link to where I got this online just because it's kind of a little bit dangerous because 
ring term these terminals here and so if you get your fingers too close you could actually touch it so it's kind of meant to be behind a plexiglass which i don't have so if you have any recommendations on something to get different from this um i'd love to hear your ideas i guess i could put a plate of plexiglass over this but um yeah, so I just added some insulated 3M tape just to make sure I don't touch <laughs> that when I'm uh, switching. And then here's the uh, plexiglass I added. So I just bought this from Home Depot and I used a heat gun and uh, bent it around. If you can see that. Bent it around there and bent it around on the top. And then bent it right here and used some more of that uh, 3M tape to secure it. And it's kind of hooked onto this latch. But that's actually... It's actually pretty, pretty secure on there. Keeps me, uh, keeps me safe. Er. <laughs> uh, I really like this disconnect switch. I wouldn't be getting rid of it if I didn't have the grid boss here to test. And there's some cheap ones on Amazon, but I would definitely go with the name brand uh, transfer switch here because uh, this is where all your power is going through for your house. So don't uh, go cheap on this. But there is a lot of wires in here. You can see that going on. <laughs> so let's look at how I'm going to wire the grid boss, how that's going to be a little bit different than this transfer switch. Okay, here is the uh, grid boss. And if you're not sure why you need this, you can look at my other videos where I have scenarios on uh, why um, to have this. But anyways, this is how the uh, bypass switch works. So you have to turn off your backup power this over here and do the manual bypass. It's like an inter interlock kit. Just look under the covers here. This is where your grid goes in and you can add a breaker here for the service disconnect. And here's where a generator can connect in. You can add a breaker for your generator, clip it on here. Here are some terminals for my loads right here. If you want a non-critical, I'm just going to back up my entire house as my uh, backup loads. I'm not going to have a non-critical loads sub panel, but and then there's a bunch of different slots where you can add your breakers, clip them on, or smart ports. Again, more details on how this works in the other video. Okay, so here's how I'm going to have everything wired when I put the uh, grid boss here in place of this transfer switch right here. Okay, so yeah, I still have my grid coming in here. It goes through these Polaris connectors to extend the wire into the grid connections. And my loads are right here. And my load just comes out here, goes in to feed my main house electrical panel. Now the neutral that comes in here connects to a large neutral bar. It's just one large bar, they all, they all connect to the same bar. So the neutral here and the neutral there are all connected. And then here's my inverter. The power from the inverter uh, comes out here and goes into the inverter connections here. Now this has to connect into the grid port because this is a hybrid inverter so it can push power from its grid port and pull power if it needs to you know, charge the batteries which are connected right here. And the batteries are connected into uh, you know, the battery connections here. And the neutral also connects to the large neutral bar here. And then the ground comes in and all these metal parts, these metal boxes are all connected together. So it's all like one piece of metal and it goes, and then I have a grounding rod out, outside and I have a service disconnect out here by by my meter and that is where my ground neutral bond is connected and i only want one ground neutral bond if you don't know what a ground neutral bond is uh feel free to google that there's some really good videos on that and uh really uh informative that's definitely a good thing to know as well but you'll notice i don't need to make another ground neutral bond because all the way over here at the inverter for instance this ground and the neutral they are connected here it, these connections go all the way out and it sees this ground neutral uh, bond connection. So these have continuity here. So because all the, new, the neutrals are all connected together um, and my grounds are all connected together, they are all connected um, 
through that one ground neutral bond. So I don't need to make, make like an extra ground neutral bond as part of that. So if you are using your grid boss as your service disconnect, there is a, some jumpers where you can add the ground neutral bond in to the grid boss. Oh, and one thing that is missing is I do have a communication cable. I'll need to have what run some communication wires from uh, back and forth here. And I'm going to be installing this uh, in two days from now. So that should be coming pretty quick. I've been putting this off way too long. So I'm just going to get it installed. Okay. Let's see what I forgot here. Um, yeah, this is, it's going to be pretty easy setup because I'm going to be able to take out an extra set of wires that connect my current transfer switch. So that will be nice. Yeah, I will not need the distribution block or the disconnect here because now I have this disconnect. But that's it. Let me know if you have any questions or advice for me. But uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next video we got.